woke up this morning and the sun was gone. Turned on some music to start my day. I began dreaming. Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Douglas and I'm back with another fountain pen video. And thank you in advance for liking and subscribing to my channel. Your support allows me to continue to do these reviews, so thanks. Welcome to episode 4 of my two-part series called Doug's PPP, or Doug's Perfect Pen Pairings. So we defer to the opinions of so-called wine experts. Perhaps I can be of some assistance, ladies. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Tell us what tastes good. I've been pretending this whole time. For today's episode, we're going to pair another four exquisite inks with the perfect pens. First, we're going to return to the makers of the most elegant ink bottle and some of the most beautiful and well-behaved inks on the market, Palette Hiroshizuku. I have two selections from this Vintner. Um, Inkner, I guess. Yamabudo and Kon Pecky. Let's admire Yamabudo first. As a theatrical lighting designer for over 40 years, I know my colors, especially in wavelengths of light. This color, when filtering white light, is called magenta. Magenta has been my favorite color in light since I was a tiny little lighting designer. I think what fascinates me about this color in light is that it doesn't exist in the spectrum. Did you know that? I bet you didn't. Please skip ahead if you don't wish to learn anything. Get out! Are they gone? Good. You're my favorites anyway. Most of you probably knew that light is merely a combination of the wavelengths visible to the human eye, from the long waves at the red end of the spectrum to the short waves at the indigo-violet end. If you stream sunlight through a prism, Various wavelengths will bend at different angles, producing the smeared out colors that make up white light. You probably learned that in class, or by listening to Dark Side of the Moon while you were totally wrecked. Stars are pretty, aren't they? <laughs> What's so funny? Is your American accent, everything you say sounds stupid. <laughs> Stars are pretty, aren't they? <laughs> But did any of you stop to find out where purple and magenta are on that spectrum? Did you? I bet you didn't. Purple and magenta aren't there because they're the result of the mixture of the wavelengths from both ends of the spectrum, violet and red. This is why magentas and purples have such a vibrance to them, as the human eye has a tough time resolving the long and short wavelengths, and it's hard for the eye to focus. But back to our Yamabudo. This is a beautiful magenta, and not just when light shines through it. When you apply it to the page, it's bright and vibrant, and then it dries deeper and more subdued. So it's an exciting color while you're writing, but then it calms down and is more socially acceptable when it's dry. I think Brian Goulet is on the record saying that our next Hiroshizuku ink, Kanpeki, is the single most popular ink that they sell, or perhaps he said it was his favorite blue. I can't remember. This is my favorite blue ink, and blue is my favorite color. So, de facto, it's my favorite fountain pen ink. I've always had an extra bottle of this on hand. I have it in a number of my favorite everyday fountain pens, like my Pilot E95S Elite, even though it doesn't match the pen. But I do have a perfect match for this ink, you'll see. Now to a color which is not my favorite color in light or in ink. Green. It's not easy being green. I dislike greens that lean toward yellow. I do like greens that lean towards blue and become emerald though. And so my favorite green ink isn't green, it's emerald. It's J. Urbain Emerald of Chivore. Again, you can tell the quality by the bottle. How cool is it to have an ink bottle with a wax cap? This ink is hugely popular and its name is so difficult for Americans to pronounce, they've dubbed it Emerald of Chicken. Nice. Oh yeah, and uh, that nice chicken outside gave me this coupon. I'm sorry, this is expired. You son of a- <laughs> The 
this luscious emerald green ink has a fascinating gold shimmer to it. And we've almost made it to the end of the visible spectrum. We've had a mix of both ends, red and blue, and the other color primary in light, which is green. Now for red. For this red, we travel to the faraway continent of Australia. Australia! 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 We love you! Amy. <laughs> and Robert Oster's wonderful deep blood red, Astrakiza Rot. This ink is truly international, as it was made in Australia. Rot is German for red, and the ink is named Astrakiza after the Canadian ink goddess Claudia Astrakiza of Bauer Inks in Toronto, Canada. <laughs> There's always next year. So without further ado, let me show you how I've matched these four exquisite inks right now. Welcome to Doug's Perfect Pen Pairings. Please feel free to add your comments below regarding these ink and pen combinations. What are your perfect pairings? Let's get started with number one. This is my new Leonardo Momento Zero in Prunia. The spaghetti resin color of this pen simply begged for Yamabuto. And the moment I inked it, I knew it was the perfect pairing. And this pen will always have Yamabuto now. And this pen has a medium steel nib. The ink is vibrant and almost startlingly pink magenta when it's wet, but it settles down quickly as it dries and the shading gives a huge amount of character. And on to my favorite ink of them all, Hiroshizuku Kanpeki. And this is my first expensive fountain pen. It's a Visconti Van Gogh Starry Night. And the resin on this pen is evocative of the Van Gogh painting The Starry Night. I was privileged enough to see this astounding painting at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. I stood in front of it in awe. I'm still awed by the sheer turbulent emotion poured onto that canvas by that poor tortured genius. And when I saw this pen, I had to have it. And it has a medium steel nib. And the Hiroshizuku Kanpeki makes the pen shine. And here we have the least expensive pen in this lineup but just as beautiful and as wonderful as the others. This is the Moon Man M800 in emerald green. I've replaced the stock Moon Man nib in this uh, with a Leonardo 1.1 stub. And this is a Yovo Leonardo nib. This is a perfect match with a Gerbin emerald of Chivor. The sparkle of the resin is reflected in the gold sparkle of the ink and the emerald green matches the swirling acrylic resin beautifully. I may actually swap this nib out again with one of my new Pen BBS calligraphy nibs when it arrives. That will allow a lot more of the beautiful shading and shimmering of this ink to show on the page. You have to clean these pens out quite regularly, however, as that ink with all the shimmering in it tends to clog the feeds. This ink not only shades emerald and shimmers gold, but it also sheens a deep red. It's an incredible ink. And finally, we have my Opus 88 Bella Japanese Eyedropper. The acrylic swirls in this pen are spectacular but nothing brings out the red in this gorgeous fountain pen like Robert Oster Astrakiza Rot. I know that Diamine Writer's Blood is all the rage right now, but this is rich and shades beautifully. It isn't brown, it isn't red, it's dried blood. This pen takes a ton of ink, and although you fill it like an eyedropper, it has a shutoff valve to prevent ink burping. The perfect eyedropper. And this has a broad steel nib. Mm. 
And there you have it. Please tune in again next Sunday for the third of four pairing parties. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.